Okay, like Pastor Phil said, I'm Mary McEwen, and this is my testimony. Before I received Jesus Christ as my personal savior, I was living in a Christian home where there was never any yelling, fighting, or profanity that was said or displayed. It was a home where both of my parents were and are Christians. My lifestyle and reputation was one that portrayed me as a Christian. I had read cover to cover through the Bible two to three times before I was in college. I volunteered at VBS. I went on mission trips. I listened to Christian music and I had academic knowledge of and about God. I was even teaching others about God. Everything was good and going well until I had to face one of my most challenging and emotional battles that brought a heart check. I was almost in college when this emotional battle happened, a battle where I was planning out the steps on how to end my life. Since I was three years old, I've had to deal with a rare kidney disease, which never stayed in remission, has no cure, and just temporary fixes. At this time of my life, I was in the middle of a relapse, in depression, and on about a dozen different medications that weren't working. I was full of self-hate and regretted being alive. I remember while trying to deal with these emotions and feeling so alone, I was listening to Christian music when Matthew West's song, Strong Enough, came on. In this song, he quotes Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I went back to my Bible and read this verse over and over. As I was thinking about this verse, my eyes caught a glimpse of verse 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Jesus Christ. Everything changed that day. The heart, the heart check that was brought on proved I didn't have God in my heart. So the sinner that I was, who was feeling so alone, so full of hate, and regret for myself and life as Christ into my life. That day was a day where I experienced a rescue from the domain of my darkness by the same God that created the universe and gave his one and only son to die for me. Since then, I never feel alone. I have been out of my depression and I see myself the way God sees me and loves me. I am in and have been in remission. I also have a husband who came to have a per personal relationship with God this year. Now, my life's goal is to be dedicated to loving God, serving God, and bringing others to God. I can say with full confidence, I'm not who I used to be in all the glory and praise to God. I know that uh, it's so encouraging for me to hear that testimony of how God's working in your life. So I just have a couple of short questions for you. Number one, are you fully confident in the decision that you've made to follow the person and work of Jesus Christ? I am. And are you fully committing from this moment forward to following him and helping others follow him in the same way? I am. All right. Well, based on that profession of faith, here we go. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. And raised to a hawk in the newness of life. My name is Adam, and this is my testimony. Dear Father, I come to you as a sinner, an unworthy servant, 
Lord, you know my wicked and sinful heart. Yet even when I'm not, you remain faithful. No matter how far I've run or how much I've sinned, you've continued to chase after me, you lost sheep. I've sinned far more times and in far more ways than I can begin to mention. All the wickedness I could muster, Lord, God, Father, you know there might not be a commandment that I have kept, and yet you have always been there to pull me through the fire. I'm sorry, Lord, that you've given me so much and I've tried to throw it away every chance I've got. Thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus, that through him, I could, can, and now do have a relationship with you. When I was younger, I always knew God existed and even believed in Jesus. I thought that was enough and that I could live my life as I saw fit. It wasn't until this year that I realized I had a head for God, but not a heart for Jesus. Earlier this year, I attempted to do a 40-day water fast. At this point, I had been diving deeper into the Bible, regularly fasting, and God had been softening my heart. He had been drawing me closer. But looking back, I still had my biggest hurdle to overcome, pride. I, would, I had set up a special time that I could avoid all holidays, birthdays. I knew that it could be hard, but I thought for sure I could do it. I made it to day seven or eight, and while at work, all day, I wasn't myself. It was a total out-of-body experience. At that night, I was run down. I was totally defeated. I went home that night, took some electrolytes, took a couple vitamins, and the next day I felt all right, but I knew I had failed my 40-day water-only fast. I continued a few more days, and God granted me the peace to say I was done. And I decided on day 10 or 11 that I would break my fast because at this point I had still not eaten food. I was at peace. It was shortly thereafter where I was out in the country and I just started crying and I couldn't stop crying. And I dropped to my knees in someone's driveway in the gravel and just cried out to the Lord. And I was totally at peace. It was greatly humbling. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing to allow my heart to soften and my eyes to open. Glory be to you, Lord, God Almighty. All I deserve is your wrath, and yet all I receive is your mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will forever follow you, Lord. I turn from my life of sin to be made whole in you. May you use me to bring glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Same two simple questions. Are you fully confident in your decision to follow the person and work of Jesus Christ? I am. And do you commit your life from this moment forward to not only following Jesus, but helping others follow him as well? I do. Well, based on that profession of faith, it is my pleasure to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, and raised to walk in the newness of life. Amen.